वेलकम आई एम एन एस लावनिया असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश के सी एस कासीनाडार कॉलेज ऑफ आर्ट्स एंड साइंस इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू समराइज द फॉल ऑफ द हाउस ऑफ द अशर रिटर्न बाय एडगर अल एंड पो इट इज अ शॉर्ट स्टोरी फर्स्ट पब्लिश्ड इन एटीन थर्टी नाइन इन बर्टन्स जेंटिलमैन्स मैगजीन देन इंक्लूडेड इन द कलेक्शन Tales of the Grotesque and Arabesque in 1840. The short story, a work of Gothic fiction, includes themes of madness, family, isolation, and metaphysical identities. This short story shows Poe's ability to create an emotional tone in his work, specifically feelings of fear, doom, and guilt. these emotions center on rodrick asher who like many poor characters suffers from an unnamed disease on a dark and gloomy autumn day our narrator approaches the house of asher the sight of which renders the day even gloomier than before he notes the house i like windows and feels a depression of soul that is comparable only to the way an opium addict feels when he comes back to reality he can't decide exactly why he feels so miserable so he concludes that there are such some weird things in life you can't explain the narrator approaches the tarn that lies near the house and gazes down into it so as to examine the inverted reflection of the house rather than the house itself but it's still creepy looking he again notes the eye like windows which would suggest this is an important detail he reveals that he is planning on spending a few weeks here the owner of the house rodrick usher is a boyhood friend of his recently the narrator received a letter from usher revealing usher's illness a mental disorder that oppressed him asher begged his friend to come to the house and try to figure out what was wrong with him so the narrator agreed although they were friends in childhood the narrator actually knows very little about asher as he was always excessively and habitually reserved his very ancient family is famous for its devotion to the arts music and paintings and has given a fair amount of money in support for these activities the narrator has also heard that the asher family has no branches that is there is only a direct blood line from their ancestors for this reason the name of the estate the house of asher has come to refer both to the house itself and the family who owns it there also seem to be similarities between the character of the house and the supposed characters of the ashers looking up at the house the narrator feels as though about the whole mansion and domain there hung an atmosphere a pestilent and mystic vapor it's very old but it seems to be in great shape narrator rides his horse to the house and is greeted by a servant he is taken by a valet to see asher and on the way determines that all the objects inside the house carvings tapestries trophies give him much the same feeling that the outside of the house did when the narrator enters his room asher stands and greets his friend the narrator is shocked at how much asher has changed since they last saw each other his skin is very pale his eyes seem to glow and his hair seems to float above his head asher has a nervous agitation that renders him largely incoherent he launches into a discussion of his illness this he says is a family illness it heightens all of his senses so that light hurts his eyes he can only eat bland foods and only wear certain clothes and most sounds make him miserable asher is a slave to terror 
notes the narrator. He feels he will die from it and quite soon. It's not even the illness itself that's so bad but the fear of all the events which may cause him pain. According to the usher, this fear is what will be the death of him. He is also a very superstitious fellow. Usher has not left his house in several years and is under the impression that his family's mansion has obtained an influence over his spirit, that it is the house fault he feels so gloomy. On the other hand, he also feels gloomy because his sister Madeline, his last living relative and his only companion for the last several years, has been ill for a long time and will soon be dead. As Usher is speaking, Madeline walks slowly in a distant part of the house and the narrator catches sight of her. Though she does not notice him, Usher buries his head in his hands and cries with many passionate tears. No one has been able to figure out why Madeline is so sick. The doctors think that she is just gradually wasting away and that she is partially cataleptical. The night the narrator arrived, she took to bed. For the next several days, the narrator tries to help Usher out of his melancholy, they paint or read or he listens to Usher play the guitar. But the closer they get, the more the narrator thinks his efforts are futile. The narrator was often awed by the artistic productions of Usher, which he can't really describe for his readers in words. He painted intense, abstract, mood-driven pieces. One painting in particular, narrator remembers vividly. A long corridor below the earth bathed in eerie light though there was no light source to be found. Similarly, one of Usher's ballads stayed in the narrator's mind. He recounts the song stanza by stanza for his readers. It is called perhaps unsurprisingly the haunted palace and tells the story of a glorious beautiful palace destroyed by evil things. This reminds the narrator, Usher firmly believes that his house is sentient or capable of perceiving things. The evidence for his claim lies, he believes in the condensation of an atmosphere which lies above the mansion. In addition to music and art, the two men spent a lot of time reading the books in Usher's library. One night, Usher informs that narrator that Madeline is dead. He is afraid that her doctors will want to autopsy or otherwise experiment on her, since her illness was so bizarre. So, Usher wishes to entomb her underneath the mansion in one of its many walls for two weeks until her proper burial. The narrator agrees to help Usher move the body. The two men together carry Madeline to the vault. The narrator notes that the underground chamber lies directly underneath his own room in the mansion. As they place Madeline into the coffin, the narrator notes for the first time how similar she looks to Usher. Usher responds that they were in fact twins and that they shared a connection which could hardly be understood by an outsider. Narrator also notes that Madeline's cheeks are flushed and her lips pink. Then they screw the coffin closed. Over the next few days, Usher's countenance changes. He neglects his ordinary duties, looks even more pale and has lost the lusher in his eyes. The narrator feels though Usher's mind is burdened with some oppressive secret he stares into nothingness and seems to be listening to imaginary songs. The narrator also finds that he is himself is subject to Usher's superstitions. About seven or eight nights after putting Madeline in the tomb, the narrator feels nervous and scared and can't get to sleep. There is a storm raging, but in the quiet interludes he thinks 
he can hear eerie sounds coming from the mansion he dresses and begins pacing back and forth then he sees usher in the hallway the man looks crazy but the narrator figures any company is preferable to being terrified alone usher wants to know if the narrator has seen it he throws open the windows to the raging storm outside and huge powerful gust of wind begin raging through the room outside the narrator can see an airy glowing gaseous cloud surrounding the mansion he tries to assure usher that it is simply an electrical phenomenon perfectly explainable through science he then sits his friend down and begins to read aloud to him in order to pass the night away the narrator begins reading the mad twist by sir lancelot canning after some time he gets to the part where ethelred the hero tries to break his way into the dwelling of a hermit as ethelred breaks down the door in the story narrator and usher can hear the sounds of a door being smashed through usher meanwhile has turned his chair round to face the door to the chamber the narrator for lack of a better option continues reading as he reads about the sounds of a shield changing to the crown he hears the actual sounds reverberating through the palace usher begins speaking he says usher hears it too has heard it for many nights now i dare not speak of it then he reveals to the narrator that they buried madeline alive these sounds they have heard are the sounds of madeline breaking out of her coffin and making her way out of the underground vault madman he screams i tell you that she now stands without the door at just that moment a gust of wind blows the doors to the bed chamber open and indeed there stands madeline bleeded and bruised she rushes forward and falls upon her brother who collapses to the ground and dead the narrator a tired bit put off by all of this runs terrified from the mansion the storm outside is still raging he sees a bright light on the path before him and turns around to the house to see where it is coming from the moon it seems is shining through that tiny crack in the house that he noticed at his first arrival as he looks back at the house the fissure widens the entire house splits in two and then falls sinking into the town below thus we come to the end of the story thanks for watching we meet again in the next video